Hey, welcome back to another exciting episode of Is It Wrong? And today I got a very special person online with me. She's better known as Striper Mom. Many of you know who she is, Miss Janice Sweet. How are you? Hi, Ray. I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Janice, I've I've been a fan of of, of the boys and Striper since pretty much the beginning. Uh, when I first got saved, I started listening to them and I was really excited about uh, the music that they were doing and uh, wondering who was the backbone behind them. Uh, and I realized that it was mom. Mom is the one that carried them through and did all these wonderful things with them. And I just wanted to take some time and celebrate you today. How's that sound? That sounds good. I'm excited about it. Janice, so how are you? How are things? Everything's going good? I'm doing good, honey. I'm just getting older. I'm getting older and bolder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> older and bolder is good. I'm 62 and I'm bold too. I don't care. I don't care what people think about I me. Don't I don't either. care what people say. <laughs> That's, good. That's I'm, good. I'm a lot older than you are. And no. God has extended my life so that I can get bolder and I can Beautiful. speak up and talk to more people. And and yeah. tell people about Jesus. Yeah, you know that's what we're called to do, right? Yes. Yes. And yes. If, and if we don't do it, we'll be held responsible for it. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you know, for me and and your boys, it's through music, but it doesn't have to be through music. You know, you're a witness on the street, no matter what you just share with people, and and it doesn't have to be through music. You know, a lot of people aren't going to want to hear it through music, but then a lot of people do, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Some yeah, people yeah. just watch you and observe you as much as they can to see how you act as a Christian. That's correct. And 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 they kind of judge you, you know, because they want to see God through you. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's correct. So, what kind of let, let's talk about that for a second. So, what kind of things, Janice, uh, can we do? to set that godly example without even speaking it you know you just you just live your life as a christian and people see it right oh yeah they definitely do uh i think um social media is a is a good way to do that mm -hmm. and it, your personal relationships and and who who you encounter on a daily basis and you know you have to be aware of that a lot of the time Mm -hmm. uh, or people are going to think you're fake if you're, if you're not aware of it. In fact, Absolutely. I have been called fake. Say what? By a, a few people that I guess they didn't like me. I don't know. But uh, that mostly on social media. Not by people yeah. that observe my daily life. Because right. I really don't see that many people on a daily basis. Hmm. Yeah. And you know what, people, social media is a good thing and a bad thing because people, uh, social media has made a way for people to say things to people that they don't have to necessarily say to their face because they don't want to be accountable for their words, right? You are the cover. So it's easier to rip on somebody well, if, if, you know, if you do it on social media versus really talking to them and really getting to know them, right? Exactly. And, and they can use so many fake names. You don't really oh, yeah. know if you're talking to the person that you think you're talking to. Oh, yeah. 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 It's amazing how many uh, friend requests I get from fake people that don't even exist. Le who, the her. You know, then you, you'll accept them because sometimes you don't even have time to really look into them. I'm trying to be a little more selective oh, now. Yeah. But then you accept them and then oh, all yeah. of a sudden they start I know, posting junk. I know junk. all about that. It's just, it's everywhere, you know? Yeah. You, yeah. you know, I was hacked a year ago on my original mm. wall that I had since 2011. Wow. And um, it was it was not a good experience for me. Mm. Uh, I lost a lot of my information. And um, the girl that hacked me, she she took over my wall and ran it as long as she could. I'm not sure if it's still there or not because I'm blocked. And I didn't what? get any help with taking that wall down. Wow. I was hacked through a t I was hacked through clicking on a text message. Really? Yes. How long ago was that? 
a year a year ago it, yeah. actually it was on my it was on my birthday and my birthday's coming up next week All right, 21, your yeah. 21st birthday. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, I, man. I tell you one thing, though. I, I do wish my kids were young again. Yeah? Why is that? Because I miss them being little, you know? Yeah. But I do have some amazing grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. My wife and I, we Facebook is really good about uh, showing you old Facebook memories. And we, you know, it seems like every year at different times, we'll get Facebook memories of our kids when they were little and you get emotional, right? Uh -huh. Because you're like, I will never see that again. I will never share that time again because no. they're grown up now and it's all memories. And, you know, hopefully they're good memories because you don't get them back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So since I we're talking about a, memories. I lost all of my memories. I lost all of those and I lost a lot of my photos, but, oh, uh, man. Michael says a lot of people have most of my photos, so I'm trying to get those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just put it out there and, and say if anyone has any of my photos, send them to me. And then, yeah, that, I bet I bet a lot of people would, you know. Oh, yeah. But since we're talking about children, I, I had watched a podcast of yours a while ago where uh, you were talking about um, Robert and Michael as young musicians. And... Robert not wanting Michael in the band. Why was that? Oh, Why yeah? didn't Robert want to be in a band with Michael? Well, <laughs> that's a funny <laughs> story. Um, yeah, let's hear it. When they were growing up, when they were growing up, Michael was, he did things to aggravate Robert a lot. <laughs> no. Is it wrong? Like him and his, him and his buddy, they got together and put their, heads together and figured out what can we do to aggravate robert you know wow so they would do things like pour candle wax on the amp heads on the dials of the amps and they would wow. hide robert's drumsticks and stuff like that oh my goodness. so when they went to when robert's band and robert was in two or three bands before he started working with michael he would get aggravated and he'd get mad at his brother. They didn't they didn't always get along. Really? But as they started to as they began to work together more, they did mm -hmm. get start to get along better. I think it yeah. was just a case of Michael needing to mature more. Oh. So it was Michael's fault, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, he was yes. egging on Robert, right? Obviously. So but you know what? So let, let, let's let's try this. When Robert finally decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to quit fighting Michael. I'm going to go ahead and get back and do something with him. What was the turning point for him to um, make him say, all right, I, I'm willing to take and get into a band with, with Michael? Well, I think the turning point was Michael got older. Robert lost musicians. He was losing a lot of musicians. They didn't mm. exactly have a lot of original material. Mm. And I think he was, I think Michael was getting more involved with playing guitar, which he did not do in the really early days. He, he had a guitar, but he didn't really apply himself that much. And all at once, he started applying himself. And I think Robert heard him sing more. And he realized that Michael was starting to uh, play guitar better and that he was writing, starting to write songs. And he was hanging out in the rehearsal studio a lot too. Wow. So I think it might have been all of the, it, it might have been all of that stuff. Mm. And how old were they at this time when that turnaround finally came? They were they were teenagers. teenagers I think yeah. Robert was like 18, 19, and Michael was like 16, 17. Oh, so Robert is older than Michael. I thought it was the other way around. No, Robert's the, the oldest one. Wow. Do you have any other kids besides them? Yeah, we have a daughter named Lisa. Lisa. Is she a musician? A little bit. She sings more than, than plays. 
she kind of gave up pretty quick on music. She was really trying to be involved in it, but she, well, what happened was she was in an unhappy marriage for 10 years, it, which sidetracked mm, her. Right. And she tried to get into, into music in her 30s. Oh, right, and she, right. And she did, it didn't last very long. It didn't, it mm. lasted maybe, maybe three years. Right. Her, She's her a big supporter of, yeah. No, she's a big supporter of her brothers, right? No, no, it's okay. I'm saying oh, she yeah. is a, a big supporter oh, yeah. of them, right? Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. In fact, she she worked in the Striper office with mm. us for um, a number of years. She was, uh, back in those days, in the 80s, you know, computers were new on the scene. She did all the oh, yeah. computer work. Wow. Yeah. Back then you so, had to be a genius to know how to work a computer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, you know, we not only had the Striper office, we also had the Striper fan club. Right. Right. And that was pretty and huge, was, right? The band never wanted a record company to run their fan club like a lot of bands do. They, they just say, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, take our fan club. And the ultimately the record company benefits from it more than the band does oh wow or the artist does yeah because right. they can sell they can offer other products to the they can accumulate a mailing list so they really benefit from it sure, but yeah. the band never wanted the band never wanted um the record company to run their fan club so we did and we we got between, I would say, between 2,000 and 2,500 letters a week. Wow. It was a tremendous undertaking. But people that got letters, a lot of them were from California, but by no, by no means all of them. But at mm -hmm. least they knew what Striper was doing in the upcoming months where they were going to be appearing. Uh, yeah. What merchandise they had for sale. and any interviews or anything they were doing anything that was memorable wow, that's television fantastic. record release parties they had they had all the information and mm -hmm. in those days they had the votes on mtv born again heavy metal band is going on tour starts the day after christmas in san diego now at a striper show if you've never been to one the band hits you over the head with religion and that's literally because they actually chunk bibles into the audience Drummer Robert Sweet told MTV this Bible belting really works. We didn't know at first how the response would be, and it's, it's still quite surprising to this day to see how people really do enjoy hearing about what we sing about and how they really do enjoy coming to the show and catching a Bible. Or, or a lot of people walk out of the show saying, wow, your show's got a different feeling to it. There's a whole different atmosphere. Right, right, so yeah. They, so they knew when to call and vote for Striper's latest single or whatever. I remember seeing an interview. Uh, I can't remember if it was Australia or Ireland or something with some pastor that was talking about they, they can't have heavy metal music and banging their heads and, and being godly and stuff. And Robert, his answer was so incredible. He's like, you know what? We're you If, if you put down a pack of cigarettes... And a, 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 someone who's trying to quit smoking goes over there and smokes it. And you're not forcing them to do that. You know, and he said, our music, if it makes you want to bang your head or whatever, we're not forcing you to do that. We're spreading the gospel through our music. And if that's what they so choose to do, then so be it, you know. And I think I think yeah. they even invited that guy to a show. Did that guy end up coming to the show? Do you remember that pastor? Well, I don't know because it was in Australia. Uh, Australia, that yeah. interview was probably done when they were over there doing an Australian tour. Right, right. And um, that guy probably did come to the show because he That's probably great. got comped. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I had an ice cube in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so, my wife wanted me to ask you a question. She's like, you know. Okay. Janice seems like she has a mother's heart, right? And and my wife's like that. We love our kids, and and they're musicians too. They're not 
they're not that big in the industry yet, you know, but she said, um, ask Janet, what are some of the most memorable memories, like the top two memories she has of the boys as little kids? You know, what was the, the one or two things that they did that just really touched her heart? You, you have anything like that? I'm sure you have hundreds of them, but anything stick out? I, I do. Um, well, as you know, Robert was born first and then Lisa and then Michael. Michael was the youngest. I had never experienced. I came from a large family. My mother mm -hmm. had, was from a family of 12 and I'd been around a lot of kids during my life. But I never saw anybody do the things that Michael did when he was young. He until he was born and he was at home. We would we played a lot of music in our home and Michael mm -hmm. would do what we call bopping, which is, he would hold his back straight, as straight as a board. And he okay. would rock on the couch like this. Really? To music. And then he started. Wow. When he was about a year and a half old, he started playing the instruments with his mouth. Come you know, on, he really? played the bass, and, the bass and the drums when he was bopping like that, back and forth. And I would just, wow. I was mesmerized. I would watch him and I would think, this kid is musical, you know. But yeah. he did grow up in a musical environment. Whereas Robert, Robert was very precise. Mm -hmm. And in his room, everything had to be exactly where he wanted it when he wanted it there. Oh, yeah. And if anybody yeah, I have two of those. his stuff, he got upset. He was very right. organized at a very young wow. age, maybe three or four. Oh, that young. Wow. That's really. And neat. they like to pick on their sister. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> hey, let's talk about Phil a well, little bit. Boys. I know. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Boys are boys. That's for sure. Let, so let me ask you about that. Did there? Did your daughter ever kind of grow up a little bit of a tomboy and kind of retaliate against them, or she just kind of totally. took it with a grain of salt? Really? Yeah. Totally. She she didn't like dolls. She never wanted dolls. Every wow. doll I ever bought her was wait. It was wasted. So I think I just ended up giving them away. And she, it, you know, she learned to defend herself if, if her brothers picked on her. And, oh, nice! Uh, they did. They used. They did used to get into it once in a while. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. But I was going to ask. One you, day, I Bill. Was, I was gone somewhere, and my husband uh -huh. was watching the kids. Yeah. And while I was gone, I think it was my daughter that they were. They like to play tetherball a lot, and she took mm -hmm. the tetherball pole out of the ground, and they got mad, and they. She started running. They chased her to the front porch. Oh my I gosh. believe it was Michael that put a bucket over her head and Robert put her hands behind her and held her hands. And Michael was hitting her in the stomach and Robert <laughs> was holding her. And Philip found that he finally heard what was going on, you know, yeah. and, and he stopped it. But they they were they were young that was like i think robert was about 10 or 11 michael was about uh seven or eight something like that <laughs> did somebody get a crack in the butt for that one or they could just kind of let it go i don't know i wasn't there oh. but i assume so <laughs> yeah, yeah i assume so yeah that's great listen i was gonna ask you i know phil phil was in the memphis blue streak band right and he, he had a couple of Elvis players with him, didn't he? He recorded a CD called uh, Memphis Blue Street. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. It had five original songs on it, which him and I wrote. And Robert and Michael played on those. By, then, oh, they both by played the time on. he did that, they were, they were really starting to open up with a following in California when they did that. Wow. And he had done a few other songs with Elvis's original band members. Wow. They were they were pricey, so there wasn't any way you could do afford to do a whole CD with them. I oh. mean, it was pricey. So they and weren't so, like in a band um, with him. No, no go ahead. he didn't have a band you. with him. It was all okay, it you. was all studio. In those days, uh, okay. we did a lot of demos because we were signed to tree publishing uh blackwood music we were signed to a few publishing companies as songwriters 
Okay. So we would write songs and go into the studio and record. And as Robert and Michael, we even use Oz on a few things as they right, right. as Striper began to open up, and we mm. were doing newer, newer, and uh, more active video uh, demos. We used them more because they were actually pretty, and we we didn't take advantage of. Them. We paid them. It was a good. It was a good deal for them too. Nice, nice. So let me ask you this: At what point? When 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 the boys were getting good and by now Oz had joined the band, correct? I know Oz was was buddies with Robert, I believe it was, and he joined the band. And then, at what point no, did you say he these, came? Was it with Michael? Ozzy, Ozzy, they went to school together. They all went mm -hmm. to high school together. Ozzy would bring him home, mm -hmm. and one day I had I had a dog that was a chow, and he was vicious, and oh, wow. I didn't allow anybody to go in my backyard. And I looked out there and I discovered that Ozzy was sitting out there on the cement on the patio and he was listening to Robert's band rehearse. But Michael oh, wow. wasn't in the band at that time. So after we moved to La Mirada, which we did about a year or two later, Ozzy started coming to their rehearsals more. And um, he went to Mike and he said, Mike, can I be a, a guitar tech? He said, I'm, I'm learning how to play guitar. All I, all I want to do is just help you guys. Can I be a guitar tech? Michael, what Michael did is he went to Robert and he said, Robert, I'd like for us to join the band. Are you okay with that? And Robert said, wow. yeah, I am. Wow. I think uh, what happened when the, when they were young, younger playing on the strip, Michael mm -hmm. was, like 15 16 years old and right. they were they got to the point where they were playing on the strip a couple of nights a week wow and they were it was usually it was usually school nights oh back in those oh, yeah. days it was crazy it was crazy oh i bet but they had another guitarist and then michael just played rhythm mostly but they lost the guitarist the the mm. guitarist i guess went and joined another band and uh michael says mom i can't i can't go three piece i can't do all the guitar work and i told him i said yes wow. you can mike you're already you're already doing it yeah he, yeah. he just had never stepped out and done it before wow. so he he next the following week came and he did just fine and they played three piece for a couple of weeks and then they got another guitar player but i don't i don't think it was oz at that time right not right. yet oz joined the band in the la mirada days when they had the rehearsal studio in our garage nice do you still live in that home now or no no i oh, live in I las didn't. vegas nevada and ozzy oh, and nevada, robert live yeah. here oh really they live in, in las vegas yeah they live here yeah, uh nice. ozzy has lived here for quite a few years and so has robert Michael comes often. Him and his wife, they come, they're coming next week for my birthday. Well, you tell but them that's I not said the hello. Only reason they're coming. They're gonna they're gonna do some other stuff while they're here. Oh, good, good. Yeah, you tell them I said hello. You know, I and know, I don't know right? if you know this. Yeah, and I don't know if you know this, but um, uh, I also have two other bands, Deny the Fallen and Worldview. Ozzy has actually played on two of my songs in uh Worldview. I don't know if He's you knew a that great or not. Player. He is. No, he's I didn't a great know that. player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a he's great player. He's very seasoned by now. He's very oh, yeah. seasoned. You got you got somebody good. Yeah, yeah. All them guys, man. They're they're all great. I'm a huge striper fan. Love well, them guys and have a lot you, of respect they, for them. They work. They work their butts off. They really do. They work a lot. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure when they're not um, touring, they're rehearsing and stuff and writing. I know they write a lot of music. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, um, most of it, I, I don't think I've ever heard a song that I would categorize as a bad song. Right. Oh, even, no. Even no. they were doing originals in Hollywood when they were in the early days of Striper mm -hmm. because they needed material to perform. And that's, sure. they had some originals. Yeah, yeah. And one of them was, me one of them was Memphis Blue Streak. Oh, really? I'm going to have yeah. to look that song up. I'm going to have to look it up. 
is is Phil singing on that, or does Phil play guitar, oh, or sure. what does Phil do on that? It's his it's his <laughs> CD. Him and I produced it and wrote the material for five of the songs, but it's his CD. He gotcha. that means that he was singing and I was sitting back there telling him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they say behind every good man is a good woman, right? That's right. Yeah. So, uh, a funny story that that I heard you talk about uh, in one of your little podcasts that you do about um, holiday birthdays. You want to talk about that Veterans Day? You had St. Patrick's Day, Michael's birthday, and uh, you got you got a few uh, holiday birthdays in your family, don't you? Oh yeah, we do. Um, yeah, my birthday is St. Patrick's Day. Philip's birthday is Veterans Day, November 11th. He was wow. born on 11-11. Oh, wow. They say there's something to the, to the double, the double and quadruple ones. It, it represents angels. I don't know, but I, I've heard that. And uh, yeah, Robert yeah. was born on the first day of spring, which is wow. March 21st. And, yeah. um, Michael was born on July 4th. That is crazy. That, that I well, know you Michael, didn't plan that out. Just Well, I'll tell ahead. you what happened. Uh, a few days before July 4th, I went to the hospital with false labor. And they kept okay. me for a few hours. And, the, and then they said, go home. He's not ready yet. Oh, man. So I went home. And Philip says, try to hold off until July 4th. See if you can oh. do that. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you? <laughs> There's no way you can do that. No, and, and no. I told him that. Of course, I laughed because it it's impossible. But sure. I was at the hospital at like at like ten o'clock on the night of July third, and Michael was born just a little bit after midnight. And and wow. the it hospital they were full. They had a lot of fathers there waiting for w their wives to give birth. And I had to have Michael in a labor room and all the men and the, the, the fathers that were waiting for their wives to give birth to their babies, they were sitting in the father's room and they were saying, oh my God, some poor woman is having to have her baby in a labor room. Actually, <laughs> I loved it. It was better than the delivery room, which was all oh, yeah. really bright lights and a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it? <sighs> Not chrome, but it, it had the look of chrome. A lot of that with white oh, walls. Wow. It was, it, it just wasn't comfortable. Whereas the labor room was kind of like a bedroom. Oh sure. And back then, and, um, fathers weren't allowed in the rooms, correct? When the when the baby was being born, the dads weren't allowed right. in there, right? Wow. No, he couldn't come in till Michael was born, and uh, Michael was born, and the and uh, our our obstetrician let him come in and he he told philip he says he looks just like you i think he told <laughs> all the fathers that <laughs> <laughs> of course make them feel good right oh, that's yeah great. exactly that's great man you know there's nothing like being a parent i love it my wife loves it we have six great kids and uh it's something about when you see your kids being successful and whatever it is they do that it just makes you feel good and say yeah you know what God took care of them and we did a good job with, uh, you know, our kids are loaned to us by God, right? But our job is oh, to try sure. to raise them. Yeah, try to raise them in the church and in the godly ways. We're not going to raise perfect kids. We're not perfect. No one's perfect. But if you really enjoy your family and your kids, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, you know, and I see that with you. And, you know, I was going to ask you, uh, you managed them for a while, right? So I guess my question is, how did you know how to do that? What, did you just send out a bunch of letters to people or, hey, I got a band. I want to get them in here. What was what was no. in your head when you said, I want to manage these guys? Now, this is a little bit of a long story. Are we OK hey, with that? Absolutely. OK. I grew up in music. I started singing professionally when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom and my aunt and I, we had a trio for a while. Then when uh, we got older, my aunt retired and it was just my mom and I. And my mom and I, we were pretty hot in those days. We did a lot of background vocals for various artists on okay. Liberty Records. And, and then I kind of developed a thing where I did a lot of solo background vocals because I learned how to do different voices. 
Sure. Yeah. Um, young, young, I, my, one of my specialties was singing jazz. Another one was, uh, doing kids voices. So I was really? able to do that. And, for, and from the time I was in music professionally, from 12 to 18, I learned a lot of what not to do. Oh, yeah, so sure. So when, when the boys started playing a lot, I was working part-time as a medical transcriber in Anaheim for a Japanese doctor. And the doctor was driving me crazy because he <laughs> didn't use the right terminology. Oh, he, sure. He, he made it the way he wanted it to be. So I told Philip, I said, you know what? I'm only um, I'm only working part time. It's not a big deal. I had been in an automobile accident where somebody hit me coming home from work. And I told oh, him, wow. I said, I just I'm going to quit my job and I want to help the boys part time just doing whatever needs to be done, mm -hmm. which which in those days was getting people. There were various things that that me and a couple of other girls did we got people signed up on the mailing list we um started getting mail we had a p.o box we started answering mail not wow. everybody not everybody out of the three of us did that but right. we did what we could good could do and we started um building up a fan club and a following <clears throat> and telling everybody what was going on and um you know i believe that if God is going to raise you up, you have to become a servant first. Absolutely. And that is pretty much what happened with me. Mm -hmm. um, God started laying it on me over a period of about six months that he wanted me to be the manager of the band, but it scared me. Right. So I really didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to mm -hmm. listen to God calling me to do that. And but one what what happened was I went that way, went through that for about six months. And one evening, Robert said, Mom, we need to go down to the office and tell the girls down there that I want you to be the manager. Wow. What an because honor, huh? In those days, it was kind of up for grabs. But the people that it was up for grabs for were rapidly disappearing. Oh, man. In other words, they weren't involved. They weren't involved anymore. Sure. Um, Donovan Moore was one of them, and Terry Smith was another one. So mm. they were gone. So Robert said, we just need to lay it off, and I, and I need to tell them that from here on in, you're the manager. Wow. So at that time, I had no inkling how big they were going to become, but I knew they were, I knew God was going to use them, and I knew they were going to reach a lot of people. Sure. And one of the main things a manager has to do when they manage an artist it's quite different to manage an artist in the beginning and then if they become really popular and then more and more popular you have to grow with them sure yeah it, as they go from plateau to plateau you have to go from plateau to plateau and in california there's a lot of people that tried it and couldn't succeed but they were mm. representing uh bands like crazy because oh, yeah. the strip in those days was just unbelievable anybody any musician that was any good they were coming to california to get in a band sure yeah. and they and they were able to do that they were really able to do that a lot and then they'd run across somebody verbal agreements are binding in the state of california so they come across somebody that said well, I'd like to be your manager. Can we do that? And they'd say, yeah. And then a oh, year or yeah. two later, they'd get, they'd have to pay somebody a lot of money to buy them off. Just because and that they said they can manage them. Yeah. So wow. I knew that I would never do that to my sons. I, one of the reasons mm -hmm. God called me to be their manager was they, I wasn't, I was going to see that they were not ripped off sure yeah that was my that was one of my jobs as it should be yeah, a manager yeah. has many 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 obligations yeah and uh the band just they kept getting bigger and bigger every tour was bigger and bigger but they've always had to headline all of their own tours mm, yeah. they've never opened for a major artist wow i remember seeing them 
uh, with the band Loudness. Great band. Loudness opened for them, yeah. and Loudness did really good. And then Striper came out, and I was like, my God, man, these guys are incredible, man. Just great showmanship, just great tunes. Michael's voice, my goodness. You know, but I remember seeing them quite a few times and just always blown away, you know, by them. Now, let me ask you this. Did you ever tour with them as their manager, or you always did it from home? No, in the beginning, I did a couple of short little tours with them. A mm -hmm. And I was acting as tour manager because we didn't have a tour manager then. They did right. a, a Texas tour, and uh, I did that from a wheelchair. Wow. I, not only was I a tour manager, I was selling all their merch. And, yeah, you uh, broke your leg, right? Yeah, in Flagstaff, Arizona, we were headed home from the Texas tour, and uh, we went to see this band that we had met they were a christian band we came back in a van i stepped out of the back of the van and, the, and uh there was icy snow on the ground mm. and i didn't have good snowshoes on and yeah. my one of my feet went out from under me and the other one went underneath me and i heard my bones pop they went pop 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 and yeah. uh michael immediately tried to reassure me that I probably sprained my ankle. Well, when I they took my boot off at the hospital, <laughs> that the ball joint of my ankle was on the left side of my foot. Oh. And the bottom of my <laughs> foot was just flopping back and forth like a fish. Oh. Cuz it it, <laughs> it it fractured my leg and ankle. So immediately I began to pray and I asked God, I said, God, please, please don't let me have to have surgery to fix my foot. Mm -hmm. So the, the x-ray tech came back and he says, well, Mrs. Sweet, I'm real sorry to tell you this, but you're going to oh, have man. to have surgery to fix your foot. Oh, man. <laughs> so, so, you know, I knew I that. Said, okay, God. So I, I said, okay, God. If I have to have surgery, please give me a great doctor, which he did. He gave me an right. orthopedic sports doctor that oh, had just nice. moved to Flagstaff because they had put in a ski slope up there. Uh -huh. And so he's the one that did my surgery. And um, I was there for a week and my husband came back and took me home after a week. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I knew I knew about that because one of my buddies, uh, Dozer. Uh, William Blakefield, he, he had told me about it. I don't know if he was at the concert or heard about it or whatever. But so I, I was aware of that. But then I also, I'm going to bring back something for you that uh, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember Larry Worley? I sure do. He's in my band, Sacred Warrior, now. He told me to say hello is to he you. Really? Yes, he is. Oh, God bless yes. him. What a great I didn't guy. I know he, that. What is, he do what is he doing in the band, Ray? He's our second guitar player. So we got Bruce Swift, oh, and now we got Larry Worley. Oh, he guitar now. Yeah, he's a I'll great guitar. Doing. Great vocalist, great guitarist. He doesn't sing so much anymore. He told me his voice has changed. Whatever, I think it's a cop-out. I'm calling you out, Larry. But uh, he's a great guitarist, and he joined the band. And uh, we've we done a show with him. We're getting ready to go to Germany with him. And he told me to say, he, he actually told wow. me that he lived with Robert, I think, for a while. And he said, you tell Miss Janice. Yeah, I did. said, how you doing? So he said to say hello <laughs> to you. God bless him. Uh, yeah. But you're the primary vocalist, aren't you, Ray? Yeah, yeah, I am. Larry's not singing in the band. He's just playing guitar. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm the lead okay. vocalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he do backups? Not at the moment. He's not. He's he's trying to work on his voice. He he was in a band called Fear Not, and he was the voice of Fear Not. Um, but I guess his voice changed over time, and he decided he didn't want to sing anymore. So he just started playing yeah. guitar. And he still uh, had the band. Then he's got a guy named Eddie uh, who took over the singing. But uh, Larry hasn't been doing much singing. But he's going to start again. I, I already see. told him, Larry, you're going to start. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to start <laughs> doing the background vocals. He has to. He's got a great voice, you know? Yeah, um, he does. He. I, I didn't know that he worked with you, Ray. Yeah, he, he joined Sacred Warrior. Um, it wasn't only maybe six or seven months ago. You know, well, yeah. did he tell you that he sang on? He did some vocals on Robert's CD. He did. He told me he he did all the vocals on Robert's solo project. There you go. 
Yeah. Yeah. I told him I think they enjoyed working together for that. Yeah, that's what he said. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell Robert that Larry said hello as well. You know, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Janice, I I got just a couple more questions for you. After all these years, uh, watching the boys grow up, watching them go on tour and getting huge and, and doing all this stuff. And now they're married and you got some grandbabies. I don't know if it's with the boys or with your daughter. Um, is there anything, any regrets ever of not missing out on something or are you just happy with the way everything has gone with them, with, with music and uh, with their lives throughout their whole career so far? I'm pretty much happy with what yeah. I've seen. I've, I've seen bad stuff happen and I've seen good stuff happen. And then I've seen a lot of miracles happen. Mm. And I've also seen a lot of attacks happen, good times and bad times. Absolutely. But everything that has happened over 40 years, 40 years is a long time. It is. You know, and I look back on it and some of the things that have happened are sh so sharp in my memory, like it was yesterday. Wow. You, know? you want to share any of them with you? Want to share one, maybe one that really sticks out the mm -hmm. most for you? Miracle moment. Well, there were a lot of miracles. I, Robert and I need to get together and put our heads together and Michael too. And we need to mm -hmm. write down all the miracles because there has been so many miracles. Like, let me just tell you about one. I yeah. had one time Striper <clears throat> was out on tour and we had a bunch of dates canceled because Michael lost his voice. Mm -hmm. And I had to come up with $150,000 in three days. Mm -hmm. And two of those days were Saturday and Sunday. And people in the industry do not work on Saturday and Sunday. Sure, yeah. So, so God help me. I raised the $150,000 in three, $150, in three yeah. days. That's one thing that really stands out in my mind. Yeah. And, you know, um, Go ahead. You know, it would be neat. I was going to say, would be neat is if you and Robert and Michael got together and wrote all these down and wrote like a little, not even a book, like a little pamphlet and say miracles, striper miracles or whatever, just to share some of this stuff. Because I know with Sacred Warrior, we, we've seen a lot of things go on with us as well. You know, and, and I sure. can tell you one in particular one, we, we were on tour. Uh, I think we were in New Mexico or Texas or somewhere, but uh, Steve's son, Brian, was with us. He was 10 years old. And it's the middle of the night, and we got a flat tire. Steve's driving. I'm co-piloting our bus, right? And we uh -huh. say, all right, let's 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 fix this flat. So Steve and I got up. We went out to the trailer, and we're like, and went and looked in the trailer, and we're like, my goodness, the jack was in the very front of the trailer, and we had all our equipment in there. And it's like 2 o'clock oh, in the morning. God. We would have to unload <laughs> the whole trailer to get the jack. So Steve's like, I got an idea. Let's wake everybody up. There was nine of us. And he's like, let's everybody lift up on this trailer while I change the flat real quick. And we're like, all right, let's do it. So we wake everybody up. We go out there in the middle of the night and we all lifted up this trailer. And Steve's like, Lord, help us, help us lift this thing like it's nothing. And we lifted it up and it seemed like, like featherweight, like nothing. Steve's changing the flat. His son, Brian, who was 10 years old at the time, comes out. He walks out of the uh, of the bus and he goes over and he says, hey, you guys need help? And he goes, ah, I see you got it. So he goes back in, right? <laughs> we changed the flat. Uh -huh. That next day, Brian is like, who was that man that was helping you guys lift the trailer? And we're like, what oh, man? Oh, my goodness. He said, yeah, he said there was a man there in a trench coat with long hair helping you guys hold up the trailer. And we're like, wow. We all got, I'm getting goosebumps now thinking about it. We know who it was. That was Jesus. That was a miracle. Absolutely. It, it, Jesus or an angel or, you know, but it was so incredible because the, the Bible just says your kids, kids will see things, right? And with, with his spiritual uh -huh. eyes, his innocent spiritual eyes, he saw, and it was just so incredible and just so many stories. And I'm sure you have so many stories as well, but I just love to see oh, what, what God is. Yeah. Can I tell you another story? When, can I tell you another story? When yes, Striper yes. first started, their music was secular. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Christian. 
so they were in Hollywood playing two nights a week doing secular music and the original songs that Michael had written they were all secular so right. the guys that owned Enigma they were following them around going to different gigs listening to them and they liked what they heard mm -hmm. so they had the promise of a recording contract already but Enigma wow. was growing and they were growing they were growing fast they started out right. of the back of a station wagon okay wow and and so they had the promise of a contract with the secular songs wow. while while they and all they had done was demos they hadn't done recorded any masters yet right so while they were waiting to record masters michael and robert their their hearts kind of changed and they decided wow. that they were going to change the lyrics to the songs use the same melody they were going to go back into the recording studio and do new demos with new lyrics to the old melody wow. and they were going to pray that enigma would like it wow. because enigma liked them doing secular music sure yeah so they did that without they took their own money that they had accumulated from different people went back into the studio the lyrics were all changed and that was the songs from yellow and black attack the first wow the first one the one that has all the people's names on back of it mm -hmm. those yeah. are all people that donated to that recording so they prayed wow. they took they took the new lyrics with the new songs which were all christian to enigma and enigma said well, we still love it we we yeah, love you guys course. music we're gonna we're gonna put out your music now that was a miracle wow. enigma uh eventually became part of capital correct capital records yeah they did yeah yeah that's incredible man that's i love hearing stories like that because you know what you just don't know for people who are watching this podcast that don't know all the backstories about what was going on with striper from kids to to Oz joining the band to to having secular songs to converting them to christian songs and enigma still having that vision for them you know that's all because this whole thing was ordained by god you know and that's oh sure why i, I believe why it, it went the way that it went and why it's still going today you know anybody who See, ever god hears knew what was going to happen none of us knew what was going to happen but god knew that's right that's right and and god is still he's still blessing these guys and i'm sure he's blessing you guys too all after all this time how long have Absolutely. you been in music 20 years no just as long as 40 years on 35 36 years we got signed in 89 oh so what's gosh. that yeah yeah yep yeah, so we've been you doing had it. a heart for it all these years. Absolutely. I gave my heart to the Lord in 1985. And in 1986, we did our first album. And our first tour with, was, was with uh, Res Band. You know, and we, we, we were doing, uh, initially when we got together, we were doing a couple of Striper covers. But we ended up writing our own stuff and going on tour. And just, it, it was just incredible. It was incredible. But we've done it ever since. Wow. I did it for with them for years and then i took a break uh which i it, it, i don't have any regrets that i did that because i i was allowed to spend more time with with my wife and my kids but had i uh -huh. stayed with the band we probably would have been going big and strong like striper you know we're we're heavier and and and, and a little different but uh we were very well received you know and uh to this day uh we we very uh received with open arms by so many people you know and we're we're, we're yeah. glad to be doing it for the lord for the kingdom well i'm yeah. happy for you that you've been able to tough it out all those years um and the reason i say tough it out i don't really mean that literally but it is mm -hmm. hard to hang in there uh when you're fighting battles and you need to see big blessings from the lord because Absolutely. If you start off with little blessings eventually you need you need to see some big blessings you know what yeah, i mean yeah absolutely and and god still keeps you going 
He still has yeah. a way of motivating you and keeping you going and blessing you and showing Absolutely. you that he wants you to stay at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I love it. And uh, it's very rewarding. You know, when you get the emails and the messages from people saying, man, I was listening to Sacred Warrior when I was 17 years old and wow, blown away. I'll tell you something. When we played um, Immortal Festival last year, uh, Chris Jericho, uh -huh. do you know who Chris Jericho is, the wrestler? Oh, yes, I know. Yeah. Okay. He was there and he came up to me and he said, Ray, I want you to know something. He goes, I've been following you since I was 17 years old. He said, I have all your records and he named all the records. And he said, I'm a huge uh -huh. fan of yours. And I was like, wow. And he goes, and you have no idea how many people Sacred, War Sacred Warrior has touched in movies, uh, uh, politicians, wrestlers. He goes, you guys are bigger than you guys realize that you are. He goes, but I, I want to tell you that I'm a huge fan. And then I've got to meet Howard Jones, the lead vocalist for Kill Switch. And he told me the same thing. Uh -huh. He said, dude, I've been following you since I was a kid. I'm a huge fan. You uh -huh. know? And that right there to me is like, thank you, Lord, because you know what? You don't know everybody you're going to reach. I know Striper. Uh -huh. They get a lot of emails and messages. But there's so many people that they reach that they'll never know until they get there, right? Until they get to the kingdom. But Exactly. The, the, uh, yep. Someday you'll find out, but right now you don't know. It's hard to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can go out on tour and you can appear and you look at the crowd and you know that you're reaching those people. Absolutely. And then you think about all the gigs you've done and all the crowds that you've had, and you know that you've reached those people. But you know mm -hmm. there's so many more people you don't know about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful. Um, Janice, um, anything you want to say to anybody who's watching this that we haven't talked about yet? Anything good? Any words of encouragement or from, from a mother's heart or, 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 or a striper mom heart or anything you want to say to anyone? Yeah, I was prophesied over years ago and by a woman that was a minister. Her name was mm -hmm. Esther Mallet. And um, at the time, she was Kenny Metcalf's pastor. You know who Kenny Metcalf is? Yeah, yeah. He's the one that does the, uh, what's his name? The guy that does Candle in the Wind. Bob Carlisle. No, that's not Bob Carlisle. Um, um the one that Elton John, Kenny does Elton John, Elton yeah. John and he's mm -hmm. been very successful at it. Well, anyway, his pastor was Esther Mallet, and we had already been baptized, but she requested if she could baptize us again. And when we were baptized, there were prophets there, and I was prophesied over, and she, her prophecy, she's been gone many years. But her prophecy to me was that I would be called a mother in Israel in heaven. Wow. And I think at that time was when I got more of a mother's heart as far as young people go. Mm. Uh, I just lost a good friend um, about six months ago. I met mm. her when she was 12 years old. I was out on tour with Striper. Wow. And we were in Northern California and I met this little girl when she was 12 years old and her and I, we didn't have any contact after that for years, but we caught, we connected again on Facebook mm. and we, we, we became very, very close. We talked probably once a week on the phone, maybe, but she passed away about six months ago. And I never mm. forgot, she was, uh, when she was young, she ran away from home and she fell in with a biker gang and they weren't the Christian bikers. They were the Hells Angels. Mm. And they had her dancing in one of their bars when she was oh, like Lord. 13 years old. Oh, man. And she finally, she finally got away from that kind of life. But then she became she became like a groupie when she got 18 or 19 years old. She went through all of that and then wow. she became a Christian and her and I wow. got really close again. And I feel that God was showing me 
that since people do call me striper mom that i have to represent as a mom to them certainly yeah not all people. yeah some people yeah. just know me by that name they call me by that name and i appreciate it but i don't have a deep friendship with them right but then right. there are other people that i have deep friendships with and there are people that i've known for years and years that that i used to talk to on the phone when i was managing striper mm -hmm. and they would um i don't know how to say it anyways <laughs> they would stay friends all those years uh, for 40 years they've been friends i've got certain people that have been friends for 40 years wow and then other people that i was friends with that i haven't connected with in years and and those are the people that that i minister to you know right. the people that i've been friends with for years and years yeah yeah and and once in a while one of them finds me they find out where i'm at they 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 find me on social media or facebook and we connect again and it's always god that does it mm, yeah that's great it's always great you god know um, that makes the connection yeah i i i I was really impressed when uh, one day, you know, I post a lot on Facebook and one day out of the blue, you you commented on something that I had pay posted and I was like, wow, that's really cool. You know, and you and I had a conversation a little earlier today and you said, I'm just a person. I'm not anyone special. But you know what? You took the time out to respond to me. And now you and I have had a, a sort of a friendship on, on, on Facebook where we chat here and there, you know, and you comment on my stuff uh -huh. and I comment on yours and it's neat because you didn't let um, uh, Striper and, and their stardom and, 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 and all that get to your head where you feel like you're bigger than anyone else because you're, you know, who you are. And that's why I wanted to talk with you. And I wanted to celebrate you, Janice, because, you know, you've done a great job with the guys and, 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 and people who've hung around your home. And uh, it's just really neat to see that uh, you're still involved in their lives and things that are going on. And uh, I want to personally thank you you know, for, for raising these guys the way that you did and doing the things that you did with them as, as band mom, you know, as striper mom and their manager and, you know, all the ups and downs of being on the road and everything. And uh, it's it's just wonderful to see uh, close families like that because I know there's so many families that are tore apart for whatever stinking reason, you know, but when you have what you guys have and you're still uh, tight with one another, that that's a blessing right there. You know, so um, I, sure I just is. wanted to. And, and yes. I'll tell you something, Ray. I'll mm -hmm. tell you something. Um, God prepares us for years mm -hmm. to do his work in some cases. Because when I became their manager, there were certain things that came up that I had to know. And as I look back in my past, I remembered, oh, that's why God did that then. That's why God allowed that then is because he knew I was going to need that information later. Absolutely. And I had that I had that experience so many times. Wow. Uh, whereas I was being prepared years before I became their manager. I became their manager in my mid 40s and wow. God was so, preparing me years before that and I was called yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah. And so God, God me. prepped you all that time. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure uh -huh. that that was a big undertaking. You know, to be it thrown was. into well, not thrown into that, but you know, to to be part of that. You know, that's that's neat. But uh, so, Janice, listen. Uh, I just want to thank you for uh, being on here with me. I really enjoyed our chat and hearing the stories of of the guys growing up and and being able to say hi to you from Larry. And uh, it's neat. Let's let's stay friends. Let's. Let's uh let's just chat, you know, and again tell tell the guys I said hello and uh tell okay, Ozzy uh, right. I said hi and all that good stuff. And all right, guys, okay. listen. Thank you for uh, having we've been hanging me. out. Thank you, thank you. This has been uh Is It Wrong with Ray and with uh Striper Mom. And I hope you guys all enjoyed this podcast and remember to uh subscribe. Remember if if you don't have any striper records, go on, check them out, subscribe to their channels and all that, and uh until then, is it wrong? God bless you guys.